Hello, I'm Charlotte Sripathma. We start in northern China, where the death toll from heavy rains and flooding has risen to 20. Authorities say 19 people are also missing in Beijing and Hebei as rescue efforts continue. Well, Storm Doxuri hit the country on Friday, bringing almost a month's rainfall to Beijing in just 40 hours. Military units and helicopters are now being used to deliver food and supplies to rail passengers who've been stranded by the floodwaters. Forecasters have warned of the potential for more flash flooding and landslides in the coming days. Well, our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell has sent this update from Beijing. Well, several good bits of news first. So in Beijing, the rain seems to have stopped. Uh, certainly where, where we are, it's it stopped for the moment. And the hope is that it might ease right off now. Now, of course, it depends what happens after that other typhoon hits in the coming 24 hours. It may be, though, that the typhoon doesn't strike Zhejiang, where it was initially expected to, to reach landfall. Also, it's not guaranteed that it will move all the way up to Beijing in the same way that the previous typhoon did. So it may be that things you know, could ease off here. And the other, of course, great bit of news is that 14 of the 27 people missing have been found, and that's really fantastic. So, you know, you'd hope that more people will be out there to be found and that the death toll isn't going to go up after these flash floods so suddenly struck Beijing, washing cars away by the dozens and, and sadly killing some people. Yes, that is really encouraging news that those people have been found, Steve. In terms of what um, help there is available to those affected, clearly, you know, it's a very vulnerable situation. How are those people being helped? And, and also, is there sort of refuge that they can seek? Yes, well, many people have been moved. I think we're over 100,000 people now have been moved to safety. Some have been placed in stadiums and, and actually in some of the COVID centres that were being used to, to house people during that crisis. Uh, they're, they're being used to house people who've, who've been moved to safety. Other parts of Western Beijing, which have been cut off because roads have collapsed, because the rivers are too high, without electricity, without water, well, helicopters are flying in and dropping emergency supplies to them. China is very good at mobilising the military when these types of emergencies happened. Uh, for example, though, it, there is one town in Hebei, though, which, which had been cut off. Now, the problem there is that what they've done is to try to divert some of this water to take the pressure off Beijing. But of course, it's gone, got to go somewhere and it's gone to other places now, which means that some parts of Hebei province also now flooded, also now cut off and also then need help. So the military is having to fly in there as well to drop off emergency supplies. But as I say, the hope is that the weather will ease off now in the coming days, allowing uh, for the emergency teams to really get a handle on the situation. And what we're also seeing, though, is in some parts, as the waters sort of recede a bit, though, the calamity caused by that flash flooding, I mean, crushed up cars found in trees and this type of thing. I mean, it was so sudden and so extreme and so dangerous. And that explains why the death toll has happened here as, a part, as opposed to other parts of northern China. See, we were seeing some pictures a bit earlier on of the devastation caused and the really quite sort of shocking images. In terms of these sort of storms, is this unusual for China? Not so unusual for China, but unusual for Beijing. I mean, the south of China gets hit by big typhoons several times a year. And the authorities there are more accustomed to it. So they're able to move people around quickly when they need to. People who live there are also used to it. Now, Beijing has seen this type of thing, but not with the same frequency. And that's why when the, the speed of, of this uh, came along, when these gushing brown waters filled up rivers which haven't been you know that that full for decades and people have gone on to take photos of it what have you and next thing you know there are car bodies being washed into the river or in, in front of them you, you can understand why 
people are just they're not used to it they're not accustomed to this type of thing officials here did warn residents to stay indoors in Beijing they told employers not to make their staff go to work and yet it has still been deadly uh, in this city I mean you know you've got tens of millions of people live here so it is very difficult to manage when an emergency like this when flooding rains strike a city that's not used to it now Stephen McDonnell in Beijing for us